Hello everyone, Tanak here. Welcome to a special episode where we're going to talk about diplomacy in EVE Online. And when I'm talking about diplomacy, I don't mean the diplomatic relations skill. I mean how you how do you manage your uh, foreign affair foreign affair as a corporate CEO. Uh, I'm not going to go into the mechanics, like how do you handle standing access list and stuff like that. This is going to be more uh, the the thinking process behind it, and how do you apply uh, how do you apply a method to your way of handling those for the foreign affair uh, to ensure that you are successful as a CEO. Uh, so you're going to say, okay, well, who are you, Tanak? To, uh, to talk to us about diplomacy. Do you know what you're talking about? Uh, uh, well, I'm a guy that after two months in game, I anchored my structure in low sec with no combat skill whatsoever. And I still managed to survive and have my corp uh, thrive. And I had uh, mostly my, <laughs> my diplomatic skill uh, and help from f a few people and you could say that I got the help because of the, the diplomatic skill so I, I don't want to flex that I'm good at diplomacy I'm not a natural at all uh, I do however uh, operate at a uh, manager level in a very large corporation I have received uh, formal training in uh, political acumen uh, stakeholder management over the year I've taken multiple class and how to to handle relationship uh, so without calling myself a pro because I am far from a pro I know people that are a lot better than me I would say that I have enough experience to be able to at least uh, explain the basic and there's at least I'm at a point where there's at least a method to how I approach this. Uh, so without without uh, getting into too much detail, uh, I did prepare a little presentation, nothing too fancy, but just to tempt the idea to uh, to to tell you how you should manage your relationship. This is going to be uh, mostly like individual corp level i'm not going to go into alliance management and block level simply because i don't know how it works i haven't had that experience in eve uh, i rather talk to you about something that i do know and that i that i practice weekly in the game uh, we'll start with a few key concepts Diplomacy deal, deals with people and organization. And there's a human component that people will often forget. Uh, you're not... Like corporation and EVE are not... They're a regroupment of individual. And they have their own power dynamic in them. Uh, they, they, they're not monolithic mind and like... A corporation doesn't want to do something. Individual within that corporation have goals. Sometimes they align, sometimes they they don't. Obviously, a, a line member doesn't have the same the same pull or the same weight as on what a corp will do as a CEO. Uh, and an FC uh, like the the lead FC will have more pull than like and the, the the new bro that just came in the corp. So, but they they're individual in those corporation, and you need to learn to deal with people and the impact they have on the organization, uh, and that's where political acumen uh, comes into play. Uh, the best I've seen a few description of it, but the way. Uh, in, in French, they say sans politique, but political acumen is the best translation I found. And it's basically the ability to perceive and judge a formal and informal uh, influences that shape the decision making process. Okay, And informal here is key because, yes, a CEO will have the technical power to do something, or a director will have the technical power to do something in a corp. But if you want to take your corp to war, uh, you will have a lot of different stakeholder. 
a different different a bunch of different officer that will want and uh, even though some corp might be more di dictatorial than other there is a power as soon as you have a group of more than one people there is a power dynamic that comes into play and you got to learn to read that properly and so th this is basically the political acumen is basically your political iq and it can be developed with time you you can uh, you can get better at it the more you practice it the better you get uh, another key concept is the political capital and that's uh, a way to summarize that is uh, how much uh, how much goodwill and power do you have uh, through your relationship uh, over time as you interact with people you build a degree of trust with those people you build some friendship uh, or even just you help these out and they they're kind of in your debt or the, and uh, or at least if they're acting like normal human being if you help if you self, save somebody's butt they'll try to save you again and th th these are all uh, those relationship build over time and you accumulate good, goodwill and the way the way to conceptualize this is kind of it's it's kind of a bank account where you do something nice for somebody often enough that at some point they'll do something nice for you too or you can try and call on that well you see sometimes people don't pay and that's part of the deal so it's it's not a science like it's not an isk bank account and i got like five political point but it's more of a like a soft power where you you need to learn it's more of an art form because you need to be able to read that and know who who will keep their word who won't uh, but but the concept still is there political capital is an important concept and the goal of diplomacy if you think about it, it's, it's, it's basically using your political acumen or your knowledge of the situation, the relationship uh, to achieve your goal without depleting too much of your political capital. Uh, and and that, that will touch on it a little more uh, later in the presentation. But you, the thing is, if you call all your favor at once, then you end up broke in favor and and uh, you might not have anybody else willing to help you out so you got to limit you 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 got to achieve your goal with the minimal expenditure of your political capital now how do you proceed how how will you apply that in your in your game how do you apply those concepts and there's there's like different different process i've seen like a seven step version there's a, a lot of different way of like how do you approach uh political acumen and how do you approach uh, network building uh, i tried to trim it down a little bit to 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 just the basic okay and i would say map out the political landscape of your area where you operate a low sec essence or whatever wherever you are and at the level you're operating you want to map out that the, the, the political landscape of the area get to know the player then you develop relationship with those in position of power in that in that area you develop your network and your credibility and you choose your battle carefully so that would be a four-step process now the first one the first part of that whenever you decide wherever you are either you just settle there or you're just saying oh i need to get better at diplomacy how do i approach that you want to map out the landscape and this is a this is a copy here of uh, of what we did when we uh, when i anchored in an ivanger i sp every system within two jump of ivanger where i was thinking of anchoring I scan all the known structure, all the POCOs, and then I went to the kill board and I, I check all those corp. Who are they? And then I would say, okay, uh, okay, who are these guys? Oh, these guys, they look like pandemic alt because they, they, I saw, and, and maybe I probably, uh, Omega, I'm not even sure now who they, who they belong to, but 
like there's hypothesis and you can be wrong uh, you, you, there, there it's not like an exact science but you want to know who these guys are uh what's their what's their what's what their relationship how are they active in the area or do they only own a few station here you want to check the local in your in your area you have a guy that's always there what is he doing oh he's running site oh he's mining in the area uh, you get to know these people uh, these people are might, might be an alt of somebody else he could be noticing that you're anchoring a structure or, or that your structure is being reft or that you just left with a fleet of uh, mining barge and he could be telling that to somebody else so you want to identify who are the, the regular and understand what they're doing and what's their what's their game in the area so so that that's one way to look at it and the way I also do is with different corp, I try to, in my head, I, I usually like give, my, give them a power level. So I would say, okay, uh, like a small solo corp, uh, mining corp that I don't anticipate can fight, uh, it's power level one. A small gang, four or five combat ship, I'll say power level two, a three, a four or five. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of assi I assign a power level in my head of uh, how strong a corp is uh, and basically if there's a fight bigger number win <laughs> so, so that that's kind of the logic that i have in my head it's not it's not always true it's just guideline but that's the way i i i map it and then what you want to do is try to map those relationships uh, this is an example of uh, of how I started when I was in uh, when we in, when we anchored in Beke. Uh, so you start to locate different people. Obviously, this is like a very very small map of the relationship in the area. My real map that I use uh, are much more detailed than this. This is just to give you an example so you can develop your own system. But I would start with my own corp and then try to flag that and then i will i will again assign a power level uh let's say like guns are us when we anchored and becky we were a two now we're maybe it we're maybe more of a three now uh and i would like assign okay these guys and i'm not going to give you their their power their, the, my perceived power level for them because i don't want to anger anybody <laughs> but anyway uh and then you map the relationship okay like okay these guys okay they shot they shoot our miners so they're they, i'll okay i'll make them as orange like hostile to us these guys shoot our miner too so i will make them as a style if they start shooting our station i may i might put them as red and uh, so uh, and i usually keep try to keep that map up to date uh, then you have people that are your ally. You you work with them. You 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 share intel. So you will map your own relationship. And what what is starting to be interesting is you want to learn these, the one that are that are not directly yours because you know your own relationship. But what you want to know is what's their game what's their game what's their game at at each of the these other player who who are they talking to who are their blues who are their who are their allies who are their enemies uh, because in some situation you can you can play that in your favor for example if uh, for some reason uh white sky come and try to shoot our structure i may i may, maybe i won't but a, a possibility would be to say okay well these guys their enemy with do, with these guys so maybe i could try to flip that thing here to blue temporarily or say okay well you want to team up against them if you know that they're enemy so you will play that network here you you always want to you want a good a good knowledge of the the map of the like the, the relationship map to be able to play that uh as best you can uh for for your to achieve your personal goal obviously uh, 
And then what you want to do once you have your map is develop relationship with them. You don't want to wait for when you need it. And that is very, very important. Uh, you want to have like you you want to identify with these different group. I've put name. I I hope you guys don't mind that I used your name, but anyway, you're this is so like this is the CEO of that corp. I've talked with him. I've exchanged mail with him. Uh, so we're on at least speaking term. <laughs> the and you want to get basically get a contact or have a way to reach each of these organization. If you have more than one contact, the better. And the higher up they are in the power structure, the more influence they have on that corporation, the better. Uh, so, so like knowing, uh, having the a direct access to a line member in Goon Swarm versus having uh, the Mitani on your uh, on your Discord uh, and talking with him every day, it's not the same power level. It's not the same influence level that you have. So you want to get contact that have the ability to influence their organization to make them do something. And you, you, again, you want to build that relationship long-term. So you want that contact and you want to uh, kind of a garden. So you want to uh, water, uh, water your garden regularly. Same thing with your contact. You want to talk with with people regularly you want to keep that communication flow well oiled so that when you do need to ask something or when you do need to make that work that network uh, it doesn't come as a surprise or as a what have you come done for me lately so you want to build that that relationship long term and also never forget that you're part of all these other guys network too so you are not just calling to get something you are also uh, you need like you need to return the favor or sometimes you need to do the favor first and sometimes you just just need to just be friendly sometimes it's just chit chat but you you, you want to keep in the loop with as much important person in your area or as much powerful group in your area as you as you can so that when something happen you're in the loop you know what is happening you know oh these guys are gonna fight with these guys or oh, the, these uh, okay these guys they're planning to move oh, I mean they might be willing to sell a station uh, on the moon that I want or you, you need to to get in that loop and have your your contact network uh, working with you, with you all the time. Just to give you an example, I spent at the very least at least one hour in game doing uh, Eve mail, and at least another hour on Discord working my contact network every day. That that that's like my that's the way I play the game. So that that's and and that's how that's how I can stay well connected in the game. And now you want to develop your network and your credibility. And that part is important, the credibility. You get to know the people. You, you become friend with them over time. And, and, and that's, that's the social aspect of it, which is also cool because a lot of these people are actually pretty, pretty fun to, uh, to, to chat with. And I'm having a blast uh, talking to them all the time. So a lot. But also, you want to be polite. You don't trash talk. And the most important thing is you always keep your word. If you say you're, if you you're going to do something, you do everything in your power to do it. And if for some reason it didn't work, then you apologize and you, uh, and you make a man for it. Okay? Because it's, it's, your most powerful tool is your reputation. If people don't trust you, then you can try to convince somebody as much as you want. If he doesn't trust you, you won't get very far. So you need to keep your word. And that's just a pragmatic approach to it. Aside from being a good human being, it is just a way, a way to ensure that you will have, uh, so you will have credibility because people know that when you say something, you will do it. 
the don't trash talk and be polite. Uh, this, from personal experience, uh, I've seen uh, I've seen that in video game you see it, but you see it also in real life. It's the the small dog syndrome. The the small dog will always be the one that yelled the loudest. Uh, and when you get into a room, confident people, powerful people, they're well behaved. They have a control of their emotion. They don't need to trash talk. They 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 know they don't they don't have to they don't have to slap you down. They they know they they know they're powerful, so they don't need to trash talk. I've never seen a vice president or a director like put somebody down uh, in public or trash talk somebody uh, I don't see you don't see that happening they 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 will they will get you bad if they if you're if you if you piss them off but they won't trash talk to you they, they'll just act they'll do what they want to do and they 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 won't they won't care they don't need to put you down with words somebody that is that is trying to build his uh, is uh, is a steam like he's trying to to lift himself up by pushing you down with word usually is not somebody but that's powerful again exception but uh, you'll look more powerful and you you you'll get more capital if you're if you're stay if you're polite and well behaved uh, and then what you want to do is you want to learn what these individual in your network want and you build your political capital by providing it. Okay. What do these guys want? Do, do these guys want ISK, mineral, manpower, station access, protection, information, uh, opportunity to fight? Uh, what value do, do you bring to them by being part of their, their network? What do they want from you? I mean, could be, okay, small minor corp, Hey, you're giving you're giving us blue in your system, and you're giving us station access, and you so we can refine at better efficiency. Political capital. You just gave them something. They, you built a relationship with them. They're much more inclined to help you after that. Uh, and have a CEO that needs people because he has like he has a moon he's doing moon pull but he can he never has enough people to mine everything so what he wants you, you provide manpower you'll get a good share of the of the moon mineral and he's happy because he's getting some money back from his moon pool so so you are, you got to identify what these people want uh, i've gotten complete true information I've gotten defense through information. Uh, sometime, oh, you just saw your enemy undock with uh, five ship and they left for that system. Those types of intel underground can get can give you a lot of political capital. But you need you need to be able to 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 understand these opportunity and and cash out or for example okay you learn somebody wants to sell a poco and you know that this other guy is trying to extend his poco empire in the area you connect a with b you're making two friends at the same time the guy that wants to sell you found him a client and the guy that wants to buy because you found him what he wants and you just connect the two together you just build some political capital so you should always be working your network like that so at some point you you, you you you're you got like enough people that see a value in you being around that they will do what they can to make sure that you stay around that that's that's the pragmatic approach to it and then what you want to do is you want to choose your battle carefully because if you're let's be very very direct about this okay you're getting attacked you're bat phoning well they might come to help you once two time three time at some point people will say well stop calling us get your own fleet or do your own stuff or whatever i mean there there is a limit to how much pull you can have and how often you want to work your uh, 
your network. So you want to uh, make sure that you don't abuse your network. These guys are our friends, our contact. You're their contact. They're your contact. You 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 work toward helping each other out so that you both achieve your goal. So you help them achieve their goal. They help you achieve your your goal, and that's how you build a network. Uh, but you want to make sure that helping you out is an enjoyable experience. Somebody comes to help you out. They shut uh, they, they, they shot a, a dread fleet that was uh, hitting your station. Let them let, let them leave with the loot. Uh, they lost a few ship. SRP them. Uh, that's just an example. I mean, there, there's different ways uh, of uh, of uh, making sure that it, it is enjoyable. Just be genuinely thankful when somebody help you out, uh, and that way the you'll become known as somebody that's that's good to work with so people will look to work with you more so anyway that's pretty much what i had for tonight so that's that's like basic 101 how to build uh, your network uh, i could go more in depth i couldn't go uh, into uh, like more of the mechanics of how you would manage your access list, your blues, uh, your blue, your contact list, your corp contact list, and everything. Uh, if I don't know if you guys enjoy, if you did, leave a comment, subscribe if you if you're new to my channel. Uh, if you didn't, and you say okay, shut up with your diplomacy, Tanak, just do industry. That's what we pay you for. <laughs> just say it too i want to know uh, i want to know what your guy you guys think so i'm trying something a little bit different i hope you guys enjoy and uh, see you uh, friday for the usual update bye bye